this episode, we continue our trip along the Eyre Peninsula. We leave Sharinga Beach and make our way to Point Drummond. Having shots are made possible to you by me, getting out and walking. G'day legends, welcome back to another episode. Today is absolutely exciting as I'm absolutely buzzing. I don't think I can get any more excited. <laughs> this is probably my favorite camp on the uh, South Australian coast easy. I don't think it gets better than this and we haven't even seen it all. I'm frothing out. We are literally right on the beach. Let's just reveal it for you. So the caravan itself is just here and then the beach is just there. How insane is that? So, and then the surf is right there. <laughs> and the surf is just here as well. So we're at Sharinga Beach. We didn't think much of this spot. We got told to go here. Didn't actually have many expectations whatsoever. So we've been absolutely blown out of the park as soon as we got here. We're with our mates, ADU still. They're just parked up down the road here. And uh, yeah, it's 38 degrees today. Blowing straight off the desert, a hot, hot easterly. No, northerly. It's a northerly today. So anyway, I'm going to throw the wetsuit on and um, throw the arm over, hopefully get a few waves. Chris is going to drone me, so that should be good. What have we got going here, brother? So I've just rocked up to this little break. I'm not going to tell you where it is because it's a pretty secret spot, but there's no one out. The boys just came in, which I was hoping to surf with, so now I've got to surf it by myself. <laughs> and it's like solid waves, so we'll see how we go. Chris is going to fly the drone out. Maybe we'll get a clip, maybe we won't. But We'll get one, mate. We'll get one. And if you see a big fish, just... <laughs> Scream and shout, all right? Right, we're on. All right, let's Come go. On, let's do it. Let's go. All right, I love you, mum. <laughs> and dad. I really wanted to get it right. Trying to find some balance in my life. I never really put up a fight. And now I'm losing sleep. <laughs> Got a few decent turns done on a few of them, but oh, my god, that mate. was so magical, man. Yeah, I still can't believe this, this morning, eh? Surfing with them dolphins, you guys would have seen the footage by now. That was 
insane. I don't think that that's ha ever happened to me before. Just to be out in the water by myself, no, not a soul around, Chris to have the drone up, and the dolphins to just come and hang out with me. Did you see them? They were just like paddling back out into the lineup with me, playing around. And then as soon as I turned on that one wave, it seemed like they all wanted to go the same wave as well. And it was just ridiculous, eh? I, I knew they were super smart animals, but I didn't think they'd want to hang out with me out the, out the back there. So, so glad they did. It felt really sharky out there until they rocked up. And um, yeah, got a few waves. It, just absolutely epic. I don't, I don't even know what to say about that. I'm, I'm speechless, so. I've showed Sarah the footage too. She's frothing it. Oh, it's so cool. Um, we're just gonna go for a swim now, so. We found a little bit of a beach behind um, Chris and Miriam's van and we're going to go have a little hangout down there because it is 38 degrees still, it's really hot. So yeah, we're going to go do that. Just told you guys all about the dolphins, so cool. I wish I could have been there. We're going to go for a swim now. There's a tiny little bay over near Chris and Miriam's van but everywhere here is pretty rocky so it might be an in and out job but it's so hot. So it's the end of the day, it's time for dinner and it's definitely not looking like dinner time. Me and Sarah still, we still can't get over you bloody east coasters, south coasters, this daylight saving stuff, like we are absolutely tonguing for a feed right now and the sun is still well and truly in the middle of the sky. Uh, sorry if the audio is really bad, we've got some massive waves just breaking next to our caravan just here. Pretty good issue to have in my books, but uh, tonight on the menu is squid. So we actually caught these squid today, but it was last episode when we are uh, leaving Elliston there. So a bit of a catch and cook. We're gonna throw some squid on the barbie instead of some shrimps. And uh, yeah, I'll show you how to pull out the kitchen on the urban and uh, we'll hopefully cook some very tasty squid. So let's get into that. potato salad so I've got some potatoes boiling some eggs which I've also made ex some extras so we can have like snacks as hard boiled eggs spring onion and then we've got some leftover corn so I'll chuck that in and then the leftover potato salad dressing from Christmas hopefully it's still good shortly all right so the way I do my squid fresh is better some people reckon chuck them in the freezer for a day or two and like soak them in um, kiwi fruit, we've heard, stuff like that. But I don't think we'll bother. So I've got the squid out here, I'm just going to chuck it, chomp it into little chunks, little squid rings. Straight out of the ocean, you rip out the ink sack, um, clean them up real good. Uh, what I do then is then slice the tubes into a nice thin little squid rings like you get at the shop and uh, our go-to mix for coating the squid in is this salt and pepper mix by Tanco. Been using this for years but a really good alternative to that is actually honey soy and garlic. So you soak the squid, uh, marinate it in honey soy garlic which we'll do next time for you and show you how to do that. 
and the secret to cooking squid is actually cooking it hot and fast. There's nothing worse than squid that hasn't been in a pan hot enough. It turns it all chewy and uh, if you overcook the squid it goes really tough. So it is a bit of a hard thing to cook. You might not nail it your first time but definitely have another crack. Um, it's definitely worth it if you nail it. It's just so tender and good and like I said it keeps Sarah happy. She loves squid so it's always good to eat it. Um, tonight I'm just drinking my 150 Lashes, I'm back on them beers. Grab me gear to a sick little um, stubby cooler for these. They call it the can swag, so it's just a swag for your cans and your beers. So that keeps them nice and cold, even if you leave it in the sun like I do. Alright, so I'm going to chop these squid up and um, coat them in this salt and pepper mix and then get them into the pan. Another spicy tip, so if you are having the uh, squid with other things like potato salad and chips, make sure you cook the squid the last thing. So you cook it super quick, flip it both sides and then make sure everything else is ready, plate it up and then dump the squid straight on the plate. That's the best way to have it. And uh, yeah, I just shut the grill so hopefully... That's the best way to have it, straight off the grill, really hot and uh, yeah. I'm waiting for Sarah right now to cook up the bacon for the potato salad, so I'm not going to dump the squid on yet. So that's a spicy hot tip. Do not put the squid on until the last minute. How good does that look? Woo. I wonder what Chris and Miriam are having for dinner at ADU. I bet it's not squid and bloody potato salad and chip. I reckon that this day today has been my favourite day on the south coast yet. Surfing with them dolphins and then catching a few squid in Elliston this morning obviously surfing with the dolphins and now cooking the squid and having a few beers with this backdrop behind me is absolutely insane. I don't actually reckon a day can get much better than that so let us know your perfect day in the comments below and uh, if you can beat this one up. Bloody hell's taking you so long. Sorry. You didn't answer my question. The potato salad is taking me so long. So the pan might be hot enough now, so I'm just going to chuck a test a bit on. Yeah, it's sizzling, so it's getting hot enough now. So you can see how that bit's a bit golden brown. It's probably time to chuck them all in, I reckon. Doesn't help that the van's on a bit of a lean and all the oil's running to the bottom of the pan, but she'll do. So I tend to cook squid probably only for a couple minutes, eh? Doesn't take long and uh, they're cooked, so cheers guys. That was stupid. So you reckon you cook squid? <laughs> I should have been on top, huh? Oh, so good. How bloody good is this? We've got fresh squid, potato salad, chippies, and we're right on the coast, having a little date, there's hardly any wind, it's absolutely beautiful. Could not ask for a better day. We're gonna go airdrop Chris and Miriam some little bits of squid and also a beer because Chris forgot his beers. So let's Free. 
So we've just woken up here at Sharinga. Everything is covered in salt. It's thick inside. Everything's like damp, so bad. This is no longer our favorite camp anymore. Look at it today. It's like so overcast, cloudy, nothing like yesterday. Um, so today we're gonna head on to Point Drummond. All of the other families that we were with at Paloobie, they're all heading there as well. So it should be really good to catch up with them. And then at least with this crap weather, we can all just hang out. So it should be good. So we've just come 30 k's down the road from where we were this morning, Sharinga, and now we're at Point Drummond. I'm finding it really hard to keep up with all the spots. I'm always asking Sarah, what's this spot called again? Anyway, it's another sick little beach camp. It's pretty much a cliff camp like we had last night, maybe a bit further up. Uh, like there's access to like a nice sandy yeah. beach here so you can actually swim. <laughs> we'll show you in a second, but it's free, which is a massive bonus in our books. Um, we've had a bit of a catastrophe though. The TV's come off the wall, so... We hit um, some pretty bumpy little gravel tracks and I didn't quite let the tyres down probably enough only because it's short and there's not much point dropping them for like a 5k stretch. Anyway, we got in here and the TV was laying face down on the table and thank God it hasn't broken. It's just the bracket just needs two screws put in. So super easy fix. That's the first thing that's really gone wrong with the van so far. Anyway, I'm about to make myself a gums coffee and then I'll walk outside and show you where we are staying and uh, the company that we are with. So so we are staying with a few families. Obviously, we're with Chris and Miriam at ADU. They've come to Point Drummond as well. We've got Just Vanning It beside us here. We've got the Wanderous Road on the other side of Just Vanning It and then who just pulled up? Chasing the Rays and Raising the Suns. <laughs> I did so good then to remember all them names. Anyway, pretty much the whole Paloobi crew is here. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll show you around later and uh, we might go down to the beach and try, maybe even catch a fish, so. We've got Miriam's board here. Chris has let us borrow it. We're gonna take it down to the beach because there's some tiny little Sarah waves and hopefully I'll actually be able to stand up this time. She will, it's perfect for her. And yeah, check this joint out. Literally right next to our caravans is this little walk down track and then you're on the beach. It's a pretty sick little spot. Definitely put Point Drummond on your list. It's another one that's not that hyped up. Scare is, scare her. Sarah is shit scared of snakes, so she's stamping her feet. And then the vans are just up there. Hey Lee. Yoo. Should be a fun little session.
for some biggies. And by mum and dad, we're talking about Chris and Miriam from Aussie Destinations. <laughs> They've adopted us, they look after us, they give us food, let us borrow their vacuum, let us borrow they give us vitamins. They give us vitamins. <laughs> yeah, literally. So when you hang out with someone, they sort of get to know you pretty slowly, but I feel like me, Chris, know each other pretty well at the moment, right? He knows the way to my heart. He has literally just come over with a key and unlocked it. And by the key, I mean an assortment of different biscuits. Let's have a look what we got here. We got some nice, um, these ones are called milk coffee biscuits. So I guess they're really good to dunk in coffee. We got some chalky bickies. Uh, I think there's remnants of some Anzacs within this container here. And uh, yeah, it could have been a Tim Tam in there as well, but there's definitely none left. He's obviously eaten all the good ones out of it, but what a man, what a legend. Anyway, should really stop eating biscuits because Sarah's just prepared a really nice meal. We just went for a surf. As you saw, Sarah got a few waves. She stood up on a couple. Uh, it was probably the best learning conditions out there today. What a spot for it. So what are we having tonight? It's a bit of a concoction. We've got um, zucchini, like a uh, ribbon zucchini, bacon, two onions, diced tomatoes, and some tomato pesto. And then we've just got some penne pasta that we'll chuck in there as well and mix it all together. Yum. So, before I said to you guys, I'd show you the camp, so I'll show you. Have a look at this. Does it get much better than that? I know last night, we stayed at Sharinga, it was pretty bloody good. Tonight, we're at a spot, I reckon it's bang on par. It probably wouldn't be better in my books. We, are, we were a bit closer at Sharinga, and you guys saw the dolphin surfing was in full swing at Sharinga. There's not much dolphin surfing around here. But um, yeah, it's gonna be a stellar sunset. Can't wait for that. So we've got ADU just here. Chris is banging on the window. The biscuit man is, ba is banging on the window. <laughs> Looks like he's had too much sugar, that bloke. Maybe that's where all them biscuits have gone. And then we've got just vanning it. There's Sue from just vanning it over there. And then we're pretty much scattered along the cliff here, but what a spot. It's gonna be an absolute epic sunset. Crack a few coldies. In fact, I'm probably gonna do that now. That reminds me. So I was looking through the fridge before and you know how it's like such a bonus when you don't think you've got something and then you find it? Like you didn't know you had five bucks in your wallet and you find it? That just happened to me with this beer. So I'm gonna delete this beer and uh, yeah, I'll come back to you after dinner and we'll show you the stellar sunset. Mate. Take... Oh, frothies. I'll take, take that back, brother. <laughs> you... Cheers. <laughs> So it's been another full day here at Point. I think I have plaster in my teeth. So it's been another full day here at Point Drummond, and we have done diddly squat. We Literally have done nothing. We haven't no, done. No, actually, we've worked. Yeah, and I'll tell you a little story. So Derek flew his drone. Derek from just vanning it flew his drone out to film some dolphins. He went too far, and he's got the big Mavic Pro. It disconnected from his controller, so he had no idea where it was, and obviously lost point of sight of his drone. Anyway, it was hovering off the ocean. And he said to me, he's like. Keelan, I'm in big trouble, man. Like, 
this is like a two and a half grand drone that's gone and he was just standing up here on the <laughs> cliff and I said bugger that Derek let's go get it so I just like Start started sprinting down yeah. the beach I looked out the window and they're both just flying down Keelan's got the shirt off it's like hanging out of his shorts I literally ran 2k's <laughs> down the beach spotted the drone because he Derek told me it's down the beach somewhere found it it was about 50 meters out the water I was, I was about to strip off into me duds and um, swim out and just wait under it with my hand up for it to run out of battery. And then I, as soon as I like touched the water, I saw the thing move and I knew Derek reconnected to it, the bugger. <laughs> so I ran all that way for nothing. So anyway, that was this morning. And then I tried to swim with a pot of dolphins today, but because they were mate, uh, not mating, they, they were breeding. Babies. Yeah, they had babies. They didn't really want to know me. So. Yeah, so Oh, cheers, brother. I'm always giving you beers, oh, eh? Oh, frothy, mate. Good ammo for it, too. Cheers, cheers, bro. All right, I need to talk to you. Yeah. All right, firstly, we're here with just, just vanning at Derek. G'day. Cheers, cheers mate. mate. What a good afternoon. Oh, it's been epic. So, I've heard a little bit of a tale from a really reliable source. Normally, you can't trust anything that doesn't come out of the horse's mouth itself. But right. in this case, you can, because that maybe came out of your better half. So, okay. I've had very good intel that you're addicted to lures and you've also got a fetish for pancake mix what can you say about that mate you never have enough lures mate you know what i mean it's different colors different sizes and to be honest with you i haven't used one of them really and i've been on the road for two years well apparently right your garage at home is just bcf they're all still in the packaging yes and you also have for every lure that you have, you also have a shake bottle of pancake mix as well. <laughs> the pancake mix, you know, when you're coming down to this, you know, the bare minimum that we are now, because we've been away from, I haven't seen a Coles in seven weeks. And, um, Did somebody pa say pancake? <laughs> <laughs> because, pa yeah, it's good just to have a couple packed away. For a a couple? Day. But, yeah, they're out of date, aren't they? Would you call yourself a doomsday prepper? What's that? Like if the apocalypse comes, would you have enough pancake mix to last through the, the century? Yeah, yeah I th apparently yes, I do. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think we do. But apparently I've, I've been told I do. In this case, it's actually paid off well for us because Sue, your better half, has actually <laughs> donated some out-of-date pancake mix <laughs> to, to Sarah Keelan Travels. So that's going to feed us for the next few days. That'll get you to coffee, yeah. I reckon. And then people probably asking, doesn't that make you sick? But no, I grew up on out-of-date stuff. So my gut is just seasoned. Um, and yeah, we're going to enjoy it's that. Just, can, we, can, can, can we go back to the tackle thing? Okay. Can you ask Derek, What's the first shop he's going to when he gets to Port Lincoln? He What's the first shop you're going to when you get to Port Lincoln? Yeah, there's a tackle world there. <laughs> <laughs> there's no BCF. What do you need though? What do you need? I need a bit of the... Um, you need the lure. A bit of, uh, I need a lure because there's a lure that... <laughs> you don't. When is enough lures? Enough lures. <laughs> there's a colour squid jig that... That, that, that oh, outfished transparent, me. Transparent. Yeah, that outfished me on my boat. I don't like that. I don't like that. That, so I've got to get that one, yeah. and I've got to get a bit of but surf gear. Okay, boat. yeah. Because I don't really fish the surf, and Lee's been sort of doing it, and I'd like to go and do it. So I need bigger sinkers for that because I don't really, <laughs> I don't really, I haven't got tackle for that. But and that's be honest, I need to, I need to get stock up on that. Yeah. And maybe you know, you know, just have a little browse. Okay. Another leader, new leader. Yeah. And maybe some new braid. Yeah. Maybe even some new reels would be yeah. right, but... Why you over your GVM because of tackle? Yeah, probably. Oh, most probably tackle box does weigh a fair bit. <laughs> yeah. Have you seen it? No, Should I, I get it out? Seen. No, yeah, alright. All right. What are you doing on that? I'm Copy bag. Oh, it's a new bag. It's a new <laughs> bag. I've got another box there, but oh I, don't know where, I don't know where it is. Look how brand new they all are too. Yeah, they have never Open been touched, up. mate. Look at this. Have they got any... <laughs> They've, they've all, they've you never see, had a fish attack oh, this but, one. But look at this, mate. Like, no, look at this. This, this is brand new. <laughs> how do you go past yeah. that in a tackle yeah. shirt? Like, that's got to oh, catch something, oh, you know what yeah. I mean? That's going to catch something these, super small. What are you going to big poppers for? Why are they, WA, that'll be good. Then you got, um, you what else we got? Find it. Yeah, like a brand new -y. Look at, never been used. Brand, is that a Repala? Yeah, oh, no, no, no. They're, they're $15 lures for anyone say, that's at home. They're top dollar. So all these dollar, lures yeah. are worth 20 bucks Oh, look each. at this. Look at these vibes, mate. So, oh, I've, got a, so I've got some of them. Yeah. Up in the Kimberley, that's what, yeah. you get the mangrove, that's what you get the mangrove jacks on. That's a good one, that one. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're all they're different 30 bucks. <laughs> yeah. Where are your other lure boxes? No, no, no. <laughs> There's one more, but I've, it's, it's and the then big there's, one. 
And then there's the zip up one that you have for squid. Yeah, the squid jigs as well. I think you've got a problem, mate. I've got, there's, a, there's a bit of space here. This is actually an intervention. Sit down. <laughs> now we've seen you, Lewis, Derek. Let's go get your bloody pancake mixers out, mate. You want to see them on no, the table? No, actually, I don't think we've got any more. No, there. you've got four left. <laughs> <laughs> Sue already told us. Cut! This has been another episode of Shit Talk with Derek. <laughs>